Hey. Okay, so hopefully you saw part one of, the, of this video. If not, it's gonna be put put right there. But I recorded the entire bottom section of Zach Saroth and it went way long. I wasn't gonna do that to you and so decided to split it into two. And so uh, if you're coming from that video, that's great. If uh, if this is the, the first part, please do check out that or uh, even better, you know, we, we, we've been going chapter by chapter through these books. And so um, we have a previous section that is about the upper two uh, segments of Zach Sroth and then one on the swamp above that. And so um, please do check out that playlist. We'll put that one up there as well. But we're going to jump back in where we left off and uh, appreciate you. The area of the Draconians down here so this whole, this, this side of town, and this is the more wealthy side of town or was, you know, is, is with, uh, uh, is filled with, with basically barracks for draconians. And this is where you're going to see them running around most of all. And so, um, uh, your players might avoid this whole area like mine did. Um, there is, I, you know, there's, there's not much of interest here except kind of, cool use of a map um there is a uh an npc uh that you can recruit down here i love the way um uh he's put he's a kinder that's just kind of wandered down here because it looked cool um and uh and, and if he's now being harassed by draconians if you save him he does not offer to join your party he will uh he will join if you ask him uh, but he just wants to wander around. It's cool, you know? If there's another kinder in his part, in the party, he will beeline to that kinder and they'll start opening their pouches and showing each other crap. Uh, cause this is what kinder do. Um, and, uh, and uh, that's kind of the way they, uh, they behave. Um, uh, let's move, let's move our, our circle here, uh, down here. So there's, uh, yet another NPC, Sunstar. Now, uh, Sunstar is one of two Keishu uh, tribe members down here. Her brother is still in the prisons, um, but she has escaped. Now, this is what um, I, I mentioned before about a prisoner escaping, and that's adding to the chaos around here. Um, this is where this is the area where she's in. You won't even know she's down there unless. You over here, uh, in the in the middle here, um, uh, Cassanth giving orders to her uh, her draconians, uh, and they'll mention you know find the escaped prisoner, etc. and so on, and that's kind of the player's clues that oh there's something down there. The other option is if you do find her brother in the in the cells. Then, uh, then he'll mention that his sister got out, got uh, got out. Uh, what's interesting is she will not mention the brother unless y'all, uh, unless you know that she can be trusted. Um, I guess on the run out, she might want to go check on him, um, but uh, but unless she trusts your party, she's not going to mention that. But he will mention her. And, um, and so that that's kind of your clue if your players want to backtrack now to go find her. Um, you know, uh, that's 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 up to up to them. Uh, my party did not find our kinder friend. Um, they did find Sunstar, and um, and uh, and took her uh, took her with them. Um, the Gully Dwarves do have an underground passage uh, to um, uh, to you know basically get you down to to Cassanth by avoiding all the Draconians on the way, which is really really nice. Um, if if the high bolt gave away the position, you know their position, the draconians are going to go in after them. Um, Three point five version says that Cassanth knows about this passage and puts some uh, nasty bugs down there um, uh, to deal with, which is which is also a definite possibility. Um, if uh, what, the way I kind of played this was this well, this is just underground sewer. There's a lot of passages that are uh, that are caved in uh, in different places. There are actually a couple places to to get out of the sewers, um, but for the most part, it's uh, it's pre ruined. But you can get down to uh, to Cassant's, um chambers. 
Now, um, this, uh, this, this area down here, th this is where you're probably going to find her. Unless she's out circling, which, hey, look, if your players know she's out circling and want to scoot in there and see if they can swipe those plates, that's awesome. Now, I, you know, there's plenty of ways for her to catch up with them on the way out and I would definitely suggest that you know you, you don't want you don't want to get through this dungeon without actually taking her out because I you know you just have to keep bringing her in until they do which is fine but um, uh, that that could be that could be a really interesting interesting approach um, in here there is a there is a trap um, uh, and this is the way I played it is like, okay, uh, as we're getting closer, it's like how much time has passed by this time, my players have taken a long rest. And so I'm trying to figure out, it's like, okay, how tired is Cassandra at this point? How long has everybody been searching? Is she just wiped out? Is she starting to let her guard down? That adrenaline is not pumping anymore. What's going on with her? And I did some rolls and I and I figured out, yeah, she's calmed down and she's fallen asleep. Uh, and and so this is this is something that you might think about. What uh, you know, some rolls that you might do. You know, she is not going to be ready at the same level no matter when they get there. You know, if they get her, there, if they get there very quick and she's in the area, she is going to be ready to fight. If they get there, you know, within the first several hours, that's fine. If she's, I mean, if she's been there for, if, if she's been searching, flying around for 10, 16 hours, that's, that's a lot. That's a whole lot. And um, so, you know, figure out some roles. How long has it taken? What's the likelihood of her being asleep? Um, my Cassandra was asleep and they tried to sneak in and take the, uh, the plates. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, without her noticing. Now they did skip the trap right here. Um, whether she's asleep or not, if they set off that trap, what happens is the doors to her chambers open and, and it's loud. And so she's going to wake up and, and, you know, one round later, she's going to stick her head out and breathe fire into that corridor because she knows no one's supposed to be there except, you know, you know, unless they're intruders. Um, and, uh, I, I made this, I made the corridor a little, um, a little ruined. Uh, you know, my players were. Were, we've talked about this. Um, my players were lower level than uh, than the the book players would be at this point, and so I gave them some like boulders and stuff to hide behind. She, they didn't they didn't even go in that co corridor, and so not that big of a deal. Um, in Cassandra's chamber, there's a pile of gold. Remember, in Kren, gold is worthless. It's just heavy. It will just weigh you down. Um, uh, the players don't want it. Uh, you can, you can, you know, figure out, uh, I would probably put some more magic items in there if they want to take the time, um, to, uh, to, to, to do this. But, uh, when they beat Cassanth in this room, the, uh, the, the, the room is going to start flooding. Um, and we'll get to that in just a minute here, but, um, my players would have, gotten away with getting those plates with Cassandra asleep because they were rolling great, except, except, if somebody who is not lawful good or neutral good touches those plates, it electrocutes them. So my chaotic good kinder grabs the plates, immediately gets shocked, and, and, and she's, like, she's like sliding down this mound of gold. Um, everybody else is outside of the room, but Cassandra is now awake and focused on that kinder. Then one of my, the players who was holding the, the blue crystal staff comes in and when, and the way I play Onyx is when she sees that staff, now we're focused. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and so she immediately beelines for, that's the only thing that saved that kinder, by the way, cause the, yeah, that, that was going to be, that was going to be trouble. Um, <laughs> Uh, and thus the fight ensues. Um, in the original book, if you, uh, you know, you, you the, your players hear this voice that basically says, um, 
you know, smack the dragon with the staff and, and, and she'll die. Um, I mentioned last time, I hate that. I hate that. It's such a deus ex machina. And so I mentioned to my players when they were talking to Mishakal in, uh, in, the, in the upper chambers, Mishakal tells them, use the staff against the dragon. Now that made them debate the whole way down of how do we use it? And so your players might, there might be a couple of rounds of them going, okay, you use the light spell. Um, cause the, the, the staff has charges and stuff or use, you know, heal until they find it, or they might go straight out and just smack the dragon. Um, that is going to kill Cassanth and also uh, into a giant white light and also swallow up whoever it was that was holding that holding that staff um, until they're both gone. But in the while it's happening, I have Cassanth just, you know, rear backwards and fly up in the air and smack the top, the dome top of this room, and it starts cracking under the weight and start collapsing with all this water and cool stuff that limits their time in this room. Um, and so, you know, uh, depending on how long they want to stay is how many treasures they can find. But, you know, throw some, throw some magic items in here. Let's have them roll for some stuff. You know, they just beat a dragon. Um, 3.5 has a really cool way of dealing with Cassanth. And I didn't do this, but I might in the future is however many charges that staff has left in it. Each charge gets, gets just dispersed into the dragon and into the holder for one D eight damage. And, uh, if it, if it hits 50, um, for Cassanth, then she goes down. But if not, you got to finish her off. And I like that because that, you know, it, 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 it adds a little fight to it that, you know, the dragon's weakened. You can even give them a, a, a round of the dragon falling back and, ah, oh, and it's like, oh, okay, she's hurt. Go. Um, I think that'd be really, really cool. I, I, I think I'll totally do that next time. And, uh, that'll give them a chance to actually fight at least, you know, in this case, a weakened dragon, which is pretty much all they can be able to take at this point, but, but a dragon nonetheless, and, and let them, let them have that experience of beating the dragon instead of just letting the magic of the staff beat the dragon, uh, which, uh, which totally could be, could be a little anticlimactic, um, uh, considering everything they've gone through. But um, uh, in either case, whoever was holding the staff uh, is going to get, you know, uh, taken up in all of that. And uh, unless you're doing that roll version and that, that person, that person happens to survive, which would be great. But um, if uh, if that person gets sucked into the white light, um, then you'll find that person up with the statue of Mishakal. Um I, I do like uh, I do like the idea of you know that damage to to this room just starting to fill everything with water because it it gives a little urgency to getting out so that uh, your players aren't like you know hanging around and um, it's like okay well now all the draconians are gone let's look through all the places we didn't see um, uh, it, that that really kind of just uh, lets the uh, uh, you know, it's like, okay, we're done. Let's, let's be done with this. Um, uh, I mentioned earlier, if they, if they reach here when the dragon's not here or manage to steal that thing, there's plenty of opportunities to have the fight on the way out. Um, and possibly even resulting in, you know, the dragon coming out back out from that well and, and finishing the, uh, the fight in the swamp, which I also think would be really, really cool way to finish off this dungeon. Um, but uh, but all in all, um, that is that is the lowest uh, the the lowest level here, um, and so there's a lot going on here, and uh, if if you're willing to role play out the the lives of these of these creatures, you know there's 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 a lot you can do here. The 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 uh, the society of of um, the uh of the gully dwarves was of fascination with my players i think gully dwarves in general are are some of the best uh, uh best parts of this dungeon they're they are they are hilarious uh they're fun 
And um, I mentioned in my last video that I did put Boopoo in the dungeon. Uh, in the 3.5 version, she is there, but in the, the first edition version, she is not. Um, but you can put her in just like that, that um, spell book of Fistandantilus. Um, even the draconians, there's there's mention of some of them, you know, so, uh, there's been a couple of them that, uh, that you know, are like got, got drunk and they haven't slept it off yet. There's a lot of draconians are sleeping. This is a normal day for them. You know, they, like a lot of them probably haven't been roused because of all the commotion or they just got off their shift and they're exhausted or they've been uh, they've been boozing for a little bit. And now there's a panic and now there's like, oh, OK, where's. Where's my sword? All right, you know, and um, and there's a lot you can do with that. Um, there isn't a ton in these, you know, in these rooms themselves, and that, um, and so the uh, I, I I really, you know, I really advise kind of like playing up the um, just these, the the atmosphere of this of this ancient city, you know, um, uh, the the uh, one one of the really cool things about this, and I was. Um, I was thinking about this really because I was playing this game. Uh, it was it's was actually a Dragon Quest game, but I was like, I was going up in this tower, like, who designs these towers? This is terrible. No one would design things like this. These dungeons are really well designed. They're like, this is how this city would be laid out, and it's a play with that. What was this room? Leave hints to what it was. You're getting a glimpse of this ancient. Um, not really ancient. It's only uh, it's only a couple hundred years old, but this um, this forgotten city that um, very few people have been been here. Um, throw in some magic items for goodness sake, especially if you start off your players at level one with no magic items. Give them some magic items in here. the The previous two floors have been picked clean. For sure, they, you know, there, there's very little there, except in little, very, very well hidden corridors. But down here, not as much, not as much. And so you can put in magic items and that they're going to stand out because everything else is rusted away. But all of a sudden, oh man, there's this gleaming sword that's been sitting here for hundreds of years and it hasn't picked up any rust. Um, stuff like that. Uh, there, there's, there's a lot of opportunity here. All right, everybody. That is not only Zach Saroth, but that is also Dragons of Despair. We've gotten through the first module. Um, if uh, if you're playing on this version, this is uh, available on Drive Through RPG. Also, the uh, the collection is also available, which collects the first four modules. That's the much more cost effective way of getting it. By the way, um, there's also a 3.5 edition version that is very very faithful to the original. I have I'm using it more and more as we go. Because it, it has some great stuff, and uh, where it does do additions, they're very very tasteful and they're very good additions. And so that um, that that's a that's a, a little pricier on Drive Through RPG, but that is also available, and I think well worth uh, worth worth the money if you are trying to run uh, run this game. If you are trying to run this game, please do subscribe. We're putting out these videos going chapter by chapter through these modules, kind of giving some ideas on how to run them, giving some, um, you know, just thoughts, a little bit of changes here and there, but also updating things for a fifth edition party as we go. Uh, I've done, we've done a lot of videos so far where we have talked about like updating the staff of mages, the blue crystal staff, draconians uh, into fifth edition. And that way we um, will be able to use them in, uh, in kind of the fifth edition world. So please do subscribe hit that bell icon. Um, I'm also going to be doing some Dragonlance lore videos. There will be much shorter videos where we go through the um, the history of Dragonlance, uh, just topics here or there. That will be very helpful to you when we're going through these uh, through 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 these games. Uh, I do appreciate you, and we'll catch you next, Legner.